Hello aspirants, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to cover some of the important developments in the field of geology which are relevant for the upcoming UPSC Combined Geoscientist interview. Whether you are preparing for the examination or simply have a keen interest in earth sciences, this video will give you insights that could be a game changer in your interview preparation. So, let's get started. The first development is about the discovery of a lithium resource here in Salal area of the Riyasi district in Jammu and Kashmir. The Geological Survey of India made headlines recently by announcing a whopping 5.9 million tons of lithium resources. And this discovery is not just significant for geologists, it holds the key to India's ambitious goals including achieving zero carbon emissions here till 2070, right? But first, let's understand the stages of geological exploration for lithium uh, in, gen in general, right? You see, in the world of geology, there is a structured process before commercial extraction of any mineral or ore. It starts with reconnaissance survey that is the G4 stage or simply by identifying the mineralized area. It then moves to preliminary exploration stage that is the G3 stage which is where our current lithium discovery falls. So it is in the preliminary exploration stage. And the sub subsequent stages are uh, the general exploration that is the G2 stage and then the detailed exploration or the G1 stage where each stage add layers of information for the subsequent stages. And the G3 stage is further divided into six crucial steps. And this is where we extract lithium from salt brines or the thermal uh, mineral loads, right? But um, you may ask why is lithium so important? Well, uh, lithium is a remarkable metal as you know. It's crucial in our daily lives. Also, India has a big plan for reducing emissions and aiming for net zero by 2070. To achieve these goals, we need lithium, in fact a lot of it. This incredible metal is the heart of electric vehicle batteries, crucial component in renewable energy storage and even in non-rechargeable batteries like those used in the pacemakers that we implant in our hearts, right? But here is the challenge. India has been um, heavily dependent on imports from uh, countries like China and Hong Kong which constitute a significant chunk of our lithium supply. So this remarkable domestic discovery is a game changer. Globally, lithium reserves are primarily found in Chile, uh, Australia, Argentina, Bolivia and China. In South America, there is something called uh, um, the lithium triangle where 54% of the world's lithium reserves are present and primarily in salt pans in the Atacama Desert and its surrounding arid regions. So you may be asked about the stages of exploration, global lithium reserves in your interview, right? So keep these things in mind. Moving on, the next update is on India's ambitious Deep Ocean Mission Program. The Ministry of Earth Sciences is all set to launch this mission in investing a whopping 8,000 crore rupees into the project, right? But what exactly is a Deep Ocean Mission? So according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature or the IUCN, Deep Sea Mining is all about extracting valuable minerals uh, from the ocean floor, which happens to cover around 65% of our planet's planet surface, right? And India is at the forefront of this as it holds exploration rights over a vast 1,50,000 square kilometers in Central Indian Ocean Basin or the CIOB under the UN Clause or UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. At present, the deep seabed mining is governed by the International Seabed Authority, uh, which has uh, not allowed the commercial mining so far. Only the exploration is al allowed on uh, till now. But uh, what uh, what uh, the major objective of this mission is, it's all about something called the polymetallic nodules or manganese nodules, which carpet the deep ocean floor, right? These potato shaped concentric nodules are like nature's treasure chest, which are filled with valuable elements like nickel, copper, cobalt, and much more minerals. And these metals, as you may know, hold both economic as well as strategic importance. And since, since uh, the uh, marine mineral resources are part of your main syllabus, the question from polymetallic nodules and the uh, recent uh, deep ocean mission uh, can be asked in your interview uh, by the interview panel, right? So keep these things in mind. Next up, Parliament has passed the uh, Mines and Mineral Development Regulation Amendment Bill of 2023 with many changes for the mining sector. Let's break it down. First, there is the omission of 6 minerals from the list of 12 atomic minerals specified in Part B of the first schedule of the Act. Restrictions on mining and exploration of lithium, titanium, beryl, beryl niobium, tantalum and zircon bearing minerals have been removed. Previously, this could only be mined by the PSUs, remember this. 
which uh, limited their expo exploration potential right so now the private sector can also join in the exploration and mining activities of these precious valuable metals but here is where it gets interesting the central government is now empowered to exclusively option mining leases and composite licenses for certain critical minerals molybdenum um, molybdenum tungsten nickel cobalt platinum and others now fall under this category the revenue generated from these auctions will benefit the concerned state governments as well the amendment also introduces exploration license specifically for deep seated and critical minerals and we are talking about the copper gold silver diamond lithium and many more minerals like that so this opens up new possibilities for exploration and development activities in the mining sector these changes make uh, mark a significant shift in india's mining landscape right and they promote exploration encourage private uh, sector participation and ensure a more equitable distribution of revenue between center and the state right and the next update is on the uh, uh, town of joshimati in uttarakhand which has found itself on the brink of an environmental crisis it all began in october 2021 when the first cracks appeared in a few houses and today over 700 houses in all nine wards of joshimon now face of this growing environmental crisis the situation is caused by its location the joshimat is built upon an ancient landslide deposit which means that even the most minor disturbances can set off a catastrophic event right and to make the matters more challenging joshimat lie, uh, lies in the zone 5 according to the india's seismic zonation scheme and this is the highest risk seismic risk zone right the zone 5 is the highest seismic risk zone but why so because it's it is the place is sandwiched between two active thrust faults one is the ma uh, main central thrust that is the mct and the vaikrata thrust vt right and the uh, floods of the 2013 and 2021 also further amplified the issue because of the accelerated rate of erosion so as a geologist you may be asked in the interview about your views on what can be done to rescue jo joshimat right well experts stress a complete halt to the hydroelectric projects in the region immediate priority to uh, relocating relocating the residents to safer grounds and reimagining the towns planning to accommodate these shifting geological dynamics improved drainage uh, planning is very important in this context as waste seeping into the soil further loosens it from within right reforestation efforts are also being considered especially in vulnerable areas to enhance the soil retention capabilities and while uttarakhand already possesses weather uh, forecasting technology it, its coverage must be enhanced right and satellite and doppler weather radars are employed for this purpose importantly scientific studies must not be overlooked because understanding the root cause of this crisis should be emphasized more so that is a holistic explanation of joshimat geological crisis right moving on scientists from the iit roorkee and the geological survey of india discovered the oldest fossil limen of a long neck plant eating dicryosaurid dinosaur in jaisalmer rajasthan so these uh, remnants discovered within rocks date back to around 116 million years which belong to a previously unknown dinosaur species well fossils of dicryosaurid dinosaur uh, have been found across the globe from north and south america to africa and asia but india's dinosaur history remained a mystery until now and these findings suggest that india played a crucial role in the evolution of these long neck plant eating dinosaurs right and this revelation stems from the uh, systematic systematic fossil exploration and excavation program initiated by the gsi in 2018 and the new dinosaur has been named tharosaurus indicus uh, the first name referring to the thar desert where the fossils were found and the second name is after the country of origin that is india and this indian sauropod is the oldest dicryosaurid fossil that was found globally right and this the new uh, indian dinosaur is a part of a long lineage that originated in india and underwent a rapid dispersal across the rest of the world so that is the inference that they uh, originated here and then they spread across the globe right so that's all you need to know then uh, next let's talk about an article that says the excessive extraction of groundwater for drinking and irrigation purposes has shifted the earth's axis of rotation and this study that is the drift of earth's pole confirms groundwater depletion as a significant contributor to global sea level rise between 1993 to 2010 the study was carried out by researchers from south korea australia hong kong and usa now what are the consequences the consequences are that our planet's axis began a uh, slow but a perceptible shift 
dipping at a rate of around 4.36 cm per year towards the east. Although this shift isn't a significant uh, enough to have a real life consequences, but the study shows that humans have excav excavated or extracted so much water from the ground that it has impacted the planet's axis and contributed to the global sea level rise. Right? So that is uh, what you need to know about this particular context. That's all from my side. I hope these updates will help you in your interview preparation. Remember, in the personality test, your awareness about the current developments in the field of geology as well as the society as whole will be assessed. So you need to prepare holistically for that. And if you need any guidance, consider uh, joining our interview preparation program um, that are developed by the geology concepts. And until next time, keep hustling and keep improving. I'll see you in the next one.